Who's your ideal reader? Who are you writing the book for? How are they going to benefit? I'll tell you who isn't your ideal reader, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dan Janelle, the author of Write Your Book in a Flash. I'm a book coach, developmental editor, and ghostwriter. And no matter where you are in the writing process, I can help you write your book. And if I can't help you, I can refer you to my trusted colleagues in my network who can. So let's get started. Who is your ideal reader? When I get a new prospect and I ask them this question, invariably, they all say the same thing. And that answer is everyone. Everyone should read my book. Everyone is my reader. And that's the wrong answer. Why? Well, first of all, you don't have all the time, money, and energy in the world to market to all these people. You can't possibly reach all these people. Second, not everyone is interested in your book. It's true. You might have a big ego. You might think that everyone would benefit from in your book, from men to women, from old to young, from black to white, from this to that, from whatever, whatever. It is possible, but it's highly unlikely. And you don't have all the time, energy, and money to reach out to all of those people. And some people can be better prospects for you than others, especially for a nonfiction book meant to gain new business and new clients for you. So it's really important from that perspective to focus on who your ideal client would be. That's the key. You need to narrow it down because the riches are in the niches. That's a famous phrase. I didn't make it up. It's been around for a million years. And it's, it's true. It's, in fact, it's probably never been truer than today. It people want specific information specifically for them. Uh, no one wants a jack of trades and master of none. They, they want the book that's going to answer their specific problems and answer their specific questions because they're looking for that kind of expertise that understands them. I'll give you an example. You know, my background is in public relations. I did a lot of work, uh, high-tech public relations for computer companies and software companies back in the day. And that's good. I'm, I'm really an expert in, in that field. I knew all the reporters and editors at all the trade publications. I could get them on the phone and all that good stuff. So if I wrote a book about public relations, it would be very valuable for high-tech people because the strategies would work. Now, let's say you're in the airline industry. Would that book work? No. If you're in the oil and gas industry, would that book work? No. If you're in the entertainment and music industries, would that book work? No. You know, some things might translate and work over and apply, but there are certain nuances that happen in Hollywood that don't happen in Silicon Valley. It's just a fact of life. So someone who's looking to hire you or someone like you invariably wants to hire an expert. They want to know that you know your stuff in their field. So much better to write a book that talks about publicity for high-tech products and services or publicity for oil and gas companies or publicity for uh, financial services companies. I think you get the idea. So if you're writing a book for self-help and you're targeting everyone, you're in trouble. But if you were targeting mothers, it'd be better. If you're targeting new mothers, that would be even better. If you're targeting new mothers with kids who are between newborn and six months, even better. The more specific you are, the better. So that's step one when I ask my new clients, who is the book for? The next question I ask them is, how will they be transformed? So you think to yourself, well, if they read my book, they're going to have more and fill in the blank, more money, more time, more focus, more stability, or they might have less, less stress, less worry, less concern, less hassles. So those are ways that you can transform people with your book. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. I also think it's really important to go into two more questions here when you're looking at your ideal client. We call this the avatar exercise. And I learned this from my friend, Christian Michelson, who's a great coach. And he didn't invent it. It's, it's been around for a while, but I learned it from him. So I'll give him some credit. 
I was sitting in a room um, with about 40 other people when he taught this exercise at one of his training sessions years ago. And he said, you know, who is your ideal customer? And it's not everyone. You need to be very, very specific. So he gave his own example. He said, my ideal customer is Judy. She's 43 years old. She has two kids. She, she's married. She, has, she drives a Chevy Suburban that's seven years old and uh, could use a few more repairs. She spent thousands of dollars on coaching courses, but doesn't have any clients or maybe has one or two clients, but she gives a lot of her stuff away for free. And her husband says, when are you going to start making money with this coaching stuff? And I looked around the room and there were about 40 of us, another gentleman and me, and about 38 women who were about 38 years old, who had two or three kids, who drove Chevy Suburbans. And while their name wasn't Judy, it very well might have been. <laughs> so, so he was really good at figuring out who his target market is and attracting them. So let's look back at that uh, example. He gave the person a name. Plus, he was focusing on one person. He wasn't saying, oh, I'm focusing on suburban housewives who make between 30000 and 50000 That's That's part of it, too. But he was speaking to one person. And you're going to find that when you write your book, if you're thinking about writing to one person, it's a lot easier than writing to the masses. But that's another writing tip. We'll get into more writing tips in this series. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the series, please do. Click on the subscribe button, click on the little bell, so you'll be notified every time we come up with a new episode. Okay, cool. So we've gone through a couple of questions here about how to find your ideal customer and client and reader. And the last question I have is, what problems will your book solve for them? That's really the key, because the only reason someone will read a book or even a chapter in a book is because you can solve a problem that they have. Now, obviously, we're not talking about fiction and novels where people are looking for entertainment and escape and fun and all that good stuff. We're talking about business books here. They want to solve a problem. So here's where it gets interesting. And I'll get more into this in another video. Um, but think about all the problems that your clients have that you can solve, that you like to solve. There are three questions there. What are the problems your clients have? What are the problems that you can solve for them? Because you can probably solve lots of their problems. And what problems do you like to solve for them? Because frankly, you might be bored out of solving certain problems. Certain problems may not pay a lot of money, so you don't want to solve those anymore. Some problems are just frustrating and long and tiring and take a lot out of you. So you don't want to solve those kinds of problems and attract those kinds of clients. You know, I've done that in the past. It's like, oh man, why did I get involved in this? I really hate this kind of work. So why write a book that attracts those kinds of people? There's nothing wrong with those people. It's just like, that's not where you want to play. That's not where you want to spend your time. So don't do it. So it's like a Venn diagram. So think about this, take out a piece of paper, draw these circles and one circle, write, what are the problems that my clients have? Second circle, what are the problems I like to solve? Third one, what are the problems that pay a lot of money, don't take a lot of time, and are fun to work with? And then intersect those three circles. And whatever you come up with is really going to be the content of your book. So that's the purpose of this exercise. You're actually creating content for your book. You're creating the outline for your book or the first steps in creating an outline for your book by figuring out what problems you can solve for your readers. So be sure to look at our other videos in this series so you can learn how to write your book in a flash and get the clients you want to build the life that you want. Look for our next video.